want to talk about pressing on. I want to talk about winning in life. How can you make it through all the different challenges that you have? How can you somehow continue going with what is going on in your life? Some of us have a lot of different things that have happened to us. Some of you have been under attack. Some of you are fighting discouragement. There's things that have come your way. How are you going to make it to the next base? How are you going to go to the next level when you're discouraged where you're at today? You see, friend, God has a plan for your life. God knows what he's doing in your life. It may be hard to understand today. It may be difficult to somehow see the reasoning behind what you're going through. It may be difficult to understand how you're going to get to the next level. But it's so important that we see the mind of Christ in our life today, where we're at. I was reading in the book of Philippians, Paul is the author. Paul, when he was writing this book, was in prison at the time. If anyone needed encouragement, Paul did at this time. And he writes in the book, and there's a particular uh, few verses here. We could, I guess we could read it up on the screen there. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, 13 and 14. Some of you are familiar with it. Paul says, not that I've already obtained all of this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Verse 13 says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining to what is ahead. Verse 14, our final verse says this, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Jesus Christ. You know, when we talk about winning in life, you know, winning can mean a lot of different things. Winning for you might be different than winning uh, for someone else. So when we're talking about winning in life, that is pertaining to the individual vision and goals in your life. Winning for you may be different than how someone else is going to win in their life. But we can all say together this morning, we want to win. We want to win in life. We don't want to go around defeated and demoralized and having to deal with the same issues over and over again. You know, I remember in high school, I, I was uh, uh, running cross country. I, I signed up for cross country in the later years of high school. But the goal was is to get in shape for wrestling. That was the sport of choice, if some call it that. I was playing football before that, never grew, and, and uh, uh, the other people grew, and I stayed a little smaller in that, so I had to pick a sport that I'd try to excel in. That was wrestling. But in order to get in shape, what we did is some of us, we joined cross country to, to build up our lungs and to become winded. But, you know, uh, uh, cross country was not the, 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 the sport of choice. It was tough. How many of you just like running for the sake of running? None of us are that weird. Oh, oh, oh I should, no, sorry. But actually, I should say, actually, I run regularly and I like running now, but I'm giving the illustration for back then when uh, a, a former day. I think I just lost a few of my audience today. Yeah. But, but listen, I remember about every time that we would start off, there wasn't a time that I didn't want to quit halfway through the run. There wasn't a time that, you know, I was running that I wanted to come up with some excuse. I'd see some people pass me. I'd, you know, I'd see these other people that had longer legs that were more winded than I. And, you know, they would pass me and here I was giving it all I had. But the thought was for the next sport, coming in the winter sport. But each time, it seems like things were coming against me, I would think, as a matter of fact, I remember many times going down the hill, if I just stumble right here and act like I broke my ankle, I could get out of this race. If I could just, you know, act like, you know, I, my, my foot went in a hole and I stumble, none of you have any of those strange, weird thoughts. But that was me. It seemed like every race there was things floating through my mind of a way to get out of this race. You see, friend, you're in a race. 
Paul said that, he says, I'm running the race. Paul said another time, I'm fighting a fight. He referred to uh, walking through life as a race, as a fight, whatever it may be. We're talking this morning about how are we going to win in this race? How are we going to win in this life? How are we going to win on a regular basis? You see, there's things that come against you. Oh, maybe you're not here, you know, you're saying, well, it, I'm not trying to trip. But you're saying, when you, when you look at all the things that are coming against you, the financial problems, when you're looking at your job situation, you're looking for an excuse. and Not necessarily an excuse, for something, for a reason to stop or to keep going. God wants you to keep going. God wants you to somehow look at the reasons in your life and why you need to keep going. Muster the strength. You see, what I had to do, what was going through my mind, is I had to talk myself into it as I was running. Before you know it, as I was talking myself into it, I crossed the finish line. You see, if you stay at it, you're here this morning, God wants to put faith in your heart. you got a new week ahead of you. Maybe some things have happened this past week that, you know, that maybe everything didn't go completely right. Well, you got a new week ahead of you. God wants to build you up for the new race, the new week that you have ahead of you. God is for you. He has a plan for your life. He knows what he's doing in your life. He has a vision for your life. I want to ask you, friend, what different things that are you up against that would try to talk to you to get, get you to try to quit, to get you to stop? You see, you got to go forward for the vision that you have for you. What I had to do many times as I was running that race to think about me being on the mat and being on, you know, weighing in for wrestling and trying to lose weight. I had to think about January and February, the winter sport. When I was in that fall mode and, and people passing me, it would have been so easy to quit. It would have been so easy to find an excuse. This ain't my sport of choice. I wasn't raised as a runner. Uh, you know, I don't have, I got short legs, but I had to think beyond the pain and the experience of the time. Some of you today got to look beyond what you're going through. You got to see where God wants to get you. You got to see the life that God is providing for you in the future. It would be easy for you this morning to look at all the different things that are coming against you and somehow try to find reasons to stop going forward. Well, let's look at Paul. He gives us some thoughts about pressing on. We're talking about pressing on. And he first of all, he says, not that I've already obtained all this or already been made perfect, but I press on. It's a fact you make mistakes. It's a fact that you don't have everything together today. It's a fact that it's not all, it, you're not all with it. As a matter of fact, you screw up. And Paul says here, not all that I've obtained everything, or not that I've been made perfect, but I press on. Some of you are looking at your life. You're looking at what you're going through on a regular basis. You're looking at your job situation, your family situation. And you would like to arrive, you would like it to be a certain picture. You would like it to look a certain way, but it's looking another way. It has a different uh, picture about it. And you're discouraged. You don't like where you're at. Well, Paul's remedy to you this morning is, but I press on. You see, Paul was in a prison cell when he was penning this. You think he liked sitting on that cold uh, uh, rock or uh, maybe no rock and behind bars? He did not like it, the conditions that he found himself in. We many times... As we look at our day and our, the things we're going through, we don't like the conditions. And we, we be looking for some reason to somehow get out of where we're at. But Paul says this, But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Friend, you got to see where God wants to bring you. You somehow got to see. There's not a person here that, well, let me try this one, that's going to school for the sake of going to school. You know what we do when you go to school, when you're taking those courses, you're, you're taking those courses because you're thinking one day, well, if I pass these courses, maybe I could fly that plane. Well, you better pass those courses or we're not going to let you get behind the cockpit or let you in the cockpit. 
Or if I pass these and I, I get from this, well, maybe I could be, be, I could pull those teeth. Well, you better pass those things or we're not going to let you in, the, you know, uh, behind that dentist chair. Here's what I'm saying. I'm saying that we pay a price. We go through different things because we're looking into the future. You got to keep your life in perspective. You got to see your, your kids serving God. You got to see your grandkids serving God. Sometimes it's generational. Sometimes, somehow, you got to see that God has a plan for you. Paul was talking himself into it here. Some of you got to be talked into what God has for you. As a matter of fact, that's why Jesus said very clear, don't forsake the gathering together. He hollowed out the Sabbath in a week. One out of seven, he hollowed out and says, you know, that's a day of, of rest. And I know we do different things, you know, today. And, you know, I'm, and that's okay. But he said there's a time to set aside to get built up, refreshed. That's why we have a, a, a lunch. What we do is, you know, they, they, back in the day, you know, we would, back in the old days when I became, uh, you know, got into this thing, we'd have Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, and Wednesday. Now people, you know, schedules are different. But here's what we try to do. We try to have an extended, and you know, if you could stay some safe 10 minutes or 15 and, and gather together and fellowship. What is that? That's strengthening our bonds together. And you know, you've come in with difficulties, you come with trials, and when you leave, you may still have those, but you're built up. God wants to build you up for the things that you're facing. Listen, not that I've already obtained all this. Paul recognized that he was in this position. He was in this uh, thing. But he goes, one thing I press on. You got to press on. You got to go. If you want to see the, the accomplishment, you got to press on. For which Christ Jesus come. Brothers, verse 13. I do not consider myself yet, yet to have taken hold of it. You see, you're going to get there. If you stay in the game. You're going to get there. Listen, friends, it would be easy for you to want to get off the horse. It would be easy for you to want to check out. It would be easy on this, on this end of the, what is this, the 30, what is this, the 31st? The, the last day of August, 2014, to say, you know what? I just don't have the venom. I don't have what it takes to want to keep going for my future. God loves you. He knows what he's doing in your life. He has you in the palm of hand. Some of you made mistakes. Some of you have gone astray. But it doesn't mean that you don't have some good days ahead of you. It doesn't mean that God can't redeem those things and, and give you a new life. Paul says here, brothers, I consider myself not to it. You have taken over. But one thing I do, I like this. This is just a prescription for you and I from the Apostle Paul on how to go forward, on how to win in life. This is Paul's prescription of dealing with a man that dealt with hardships and struggles. Telling you and I on how to live our lives. That's what Paul was doing. And he's talking about winning. At the end of the day, you do win. And he says, here's what I do, forgetting what is behind. Paul says, what you got to do if you want to win is you got to forget what is behind. What do you mean? you got to forget the past, the mistakes you've made. The other day I was talking to my wife and, you know, I got in one of those things. You, you've heard me say this before. I got in one of those things and I started to, someone said something, said, you remember when you made that mistake? Actually, it was my dad. And I said, wow, yeah. And I started to go there and I started to think about all the different mistakes that I made along this line. And, you know, listen, it would be so easy to allow that to keep you from the future. It would be so easy to allow that to keep you from going forward. Paul says you got to forget the past. Paul tells you and I, you might have made some mistakes. There might be some things that you don't like in the past. But he says, this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. Pastor Joel says it many times. The windshield, the front windshield is much bigger. Where you're going is much bigger when you're driving the car than the rear view mirror. I want to tell you, friends, where you're going is much greater than where you've been. What God is doing in your life is much greater. And it would be so easy. It would be so easy to drive our life 
by the experiences of the past, the mistakes of the past, what you've been through, through the rear view mirror. But we're not driving our life that way. We're here to win in life. God is going to help you win in the life that you're living. And he says, forgetting what is behind and straining to what is ahead. How are you going to get there? Yeah, you got to forget yesterday. You can't always dwell on the mistakes. You can't always dwell, well, I lost it in this stock market here. I had a good job 20 years ago. You know that situation, that relationship, that was good. But here I'm at today. You don't know what God has for you in your tomorrows. As a matter of fact, if you only knew what God has for you, you would find the strength to keep going. You see, the Bible says it this way in Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Listen, they're plans to prosper you. They're plans to give you a hope, to give you a life. God says for you, for the believer, those that have a heart for God, that he has a plan for your life. Don't give up on it. Don't give up on the plan that God has for you. Listen. It says, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I can't say enough about straining for what is ahead. Now, Paul's giving us a formula of how we can win. How are you and I going to win in this battle, this race we're in? How are we going to win in the fight we're in? How are we going to win in this thing called life? When there's so many things coming against us. There's so many hardships. We know how weak we are. We know the sins that we commit. We, we know the arguments we get and we know our temper. We know our shortcomings. We know, Paul says, first and foremost, you know that I'm not perfect yet, but I'm not going to give up. I'm not perfect. Listen, some of you think that, well, when I get it all together, then I'll come to church. Baloney. The best thing you could do is seek God where you're at. The best thing you can do. Listen. The Bible says it very clear. God didn't come for those that need, that were, had it all together. God came for those that knew they needed a doctor. God came for those that knew they were sick. Are you sick this morning? Do you need God? Do you need the great physician? Do you need him to come in and cure your life? He's for you. He wants to help you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to be your God. Remember that poem, Footprints in the Sand, sent it out Wednesday, I believe, in, through the email. Hey, listen, if you want to be on our email list, some of you don't like it. I only send, what, two a week? That's not too many. Uh, I don't try to talk about the services. I try to give some kind of thought. John David helps me. Good thing I have an assistant, my little John David. But listen, remember the, the footprints in the, the sand? Here, the, 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 the author didn't know what was going on in his life didn't know all he was experiencing. He saw how frail he was. He saw everything he went through. He saw how life has beaten him up. He saw all the different things that come against the relationships, his, his checkbook. He saw all the trouble he had. And he was getting mad a little bit as he was feeling in despair. Some of you are feeling in despair. Listen. And he was walking along the shores of life. And he looked back and he saw only one set of footprints. And he said, wow, wow, thanks, God. Boy, you really let me go. I know I'm a sinner. I know that I screwed up. I know I made a mistake last week. I know that I'm not perfect, as Paul said. But wow, you left me. Man, okay, I know. Everyone else told me I'm a loser. I think, you know, I must be a loser. Even you left me. And I'm walking along life. Now he, he says this from, from the vantage point of heaven. And then Jesus whispers, during your hardest time in life, during your weakest moment, during the time where you were exposed the most, during the time when you didn't think you could make it, when people abandoned you, when you have abandoned yourself, when you didn't think that there was nothing in you worth keeping on, it was then that I carried you. Hallelujah. And the footprints that you see, the footprints in, listen, Hallelujah. the footprints in the sand are not yours, my brother, my sister. 
They're Jesus walking his life through you. Listen, listen. Some of you say, I don't know where I'm going to go from here. I don't know. It's too much. It's too much pressure. I see my frailness. I see my sin. I see my weakness. And I just feel like kind of giving up. God is telling you today that I'm going to carry you through this next week. That I'm going to carry you through this dark hour that you're experiencing. And when you feel like you're all alone, I'm going to be with you during the midnight hour. And God promises to be with his children. Listen, friend, God loves you. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. God didn't bring you this far to abandon you. He has a vision for your life. He has a calling in your life. He has something more for you to do. Don't give up on it. Stay in the game. Take the course. The course is hard. The teacher's mad at you. You didn't get the assignment in. Get back in and get back to that class Monday. Metaphorically, whatever you're dealing with in your class in life. Get back in the game and don't allow the enemy to bring you down. Amen. To stop you in your tracks. Yeah. Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Listen, Paul says, this thing I do, I forget what's behind and I strain towards what is ahead. Some of you, you're just a moments away from your breakthrough and you don't even know it. Some of you, you're fighting with all and you don't know how you're going to make it. Paul says, I strain towards what is ahead. You say, I don't got any energy left in me, pastor. I don't got any energy. I, I, I'm just tired of living life. You don't know what the mistakes I've made. You don't know where I've been. You don't know anything about me. You see me on Sunday morning. God is asking you to strain ahead for your future. He has a plan for you. Listen. Yes. Put one foot forward and keep going for God. Allow God to bring you to where you need to be. God has a plan for you. I remember pastoring the first church, a little discouraged. I was at a church in Naperville, Calvary Church. It was a larger church and Pastor Schmidtgall, the original pioneer there, several thousand people was in Naperville. But I decided, had this crazy idea to go out and pioneer a church. Younger, I'm not, it's not crazy, I'm being facetious a little bit. I'm glad I did it. But, but I remember going out and calling Pastor Schmidt Gall, you know, I think I was 24 at the time, and say, you know, I think I was a little stupid for going on my own. I think I kind of liked my office before in that bigger church and, you know, that and secretary and the, the, all the you know, things that belong to a big church and being around all a bunch of people. Here I am, a smaller, you know, trying to make something happen. And I'd call myself, I think I made a mistake. Some of you are thinking that you made a mistake in launching out, stepping out. Some of you think, listen, you know what you would say to me, that seasoned pastor? Hey, put one step forward and keep going. I don't know what you got, but take one more step. You know, as I practiced that, things began to break. Here's what I want to say to you. You don't know what your tomorrows may bring. Tomorrow, that letter may be in the mail. You don't know that decision. There's someone could be looking at your resume today. You don't know what to your tomorrows may bring. I want to encourage you. You could be one step away. And Paul says, I strain towards what God has for me. We're talking about press through the past. Listen, how are you going to win? How are you going to win in life? You're going to press through the past. When, the, when it comes and bombards you of all the different things, your, your past, your past is trying to keep you down. The enemy is trying to keep you down. God wants to set you free. Listen, press in the present. It's hard. Straining is hard. you got to press in the present. You got to do it all over again. You got to keep trying. I know you don't feel adequate. I know that you don't feel like you got it all together. But you got to press in the present, my brother, my sister. You got to do it. If you want to win, you got to press in today. You know what? You've done that. You've come to church. God's honored you. You've done that. You've pressed in. Listen, Pastor Joe, and I'm about ready to wrap it up, but Pastor Joe says it regularly. Your week is going to go better because you gave God your time. Yeah. It's true. I believe that God has already prepared your week. As a matter of fact, while you're here, 
praying that prayer, God, help me. God, you don't know. I don't know how I'm going to. Listen, God is sending his angels ahead of time. He's preparing your Monday, your Tuesday. Listen, we're going to have a closing prayer in a moment. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're dealing with. But can you lift it to God and ask him to help you? Can you ask the Lord to give you a breakthrough, to help you through, to give you the strength to carry on? Can you find a reason to try and put one step forward? Listen, press in the present. See where God wants to bring you. There's no, uh, there's no individual, even that guy that, who's that guy that uh, developed that, the iPhone? Did he see, he had to see that iPhone before it was. He had to see the, what it could be. Some of you got to see what God wants to do in your future. You don't see it today. That was crazy when computers were big. That was crazy to think of a handheld computer. Ah, we're a little crazy why we're all talking on them, aren't we? You know, okay. But listen, but he had to see into the future. Some of you got to see you, your life cleaned up. You got to see yourself in church. You got to see yourself believe. You got to see your future and what God has for you. Press for the future. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12, 13, and 14. A prescription for you and I. We call it God's word. God's word for you and I on how we can win this week. Winning in life. God wants you to win. Doesn't matter what you've been through. What's coming against you. Doesn't matter. The different mistakes you've made, the sins you've committed. God's able to to help you where you're at today. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. As a matter of fact, while we're bowing our heads, if there's anyone here that would say, hey, pastor, would you pray for me? I need Jesus. I need God in my life. If there's anyone here that would need to seek God's forgiveness. You made a mistake and you really want God to help you. No one looking around. Feel free to lift your hands for God to see. If there's anyone here, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's, can we all keep our eyes closed and repeat this together? All of us, can we? As a congregation asking for God's forgiveness and help. Dear Jesus, I love you. I need, you. I need you. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sorry for, my mistakes. I'm, sorry for I'm sorry for hurting you. Please come into my life. Please, into my life. Please, help, me. Please help me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Father, let me pray for you. Father,